What's up, Crossroads kids? Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Pastor Matt, and we're gonna have a good time learning about something pretty crazy. If you've been with us for the past couple weeks, you'll know that we've been talking about the last days. That's right, the Bible says that the world is gonna end someday. Sounds like pretty bummer news, except God promises to make a new heaven and a new earth where we will get to live with him forever someday. That is pretty awesome. And nothing that we have to be worried about when we decide to love and follow Jesus. Two weeks ago, we learned that the last days are coming, that they're gonna be here eventually, and there's no way that we can make it not be here eventually. And then last week, we learned that when Jesus does come back, he's gonna come back in the same way that he went to heaven, on the clouds with a loud trumpet call and an army of angels where everybody will see him all at once. Well, today, we're gonna talk about what exactly the last days will look like. Not just when they're coming or what they are, but What's gonna happen in the last days? Is it gonna be good? Is it gonna be bad? Is it gonna be somewhere in the middle? Who is it gonna be good for? Who is it gonna be bad for? Will there be tacos? Important questions. But before we do that, we have to remember something really, really important, and that is our memory verse. Jesus told his friends that in order to be with the Father in heaven and with him in heaven, then we have to believe in him and who he is, that he really is God's son and that he really can save us from our sins and bring us to heaven with him. If you have your Bibles with you, open up to the book of John. John is in the New Testament and it's all about Jesus's life. In John chapter 14, Jesus explains to his disciples not to be worried or afraid because he really is God's son. He really is God. He says in John chapter 14, verse six, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know the Father, then you really know who Jesus is. And if you really wanna get to know the Father, then you're gonna get to know who Jesus is. Jesus is God's son who came to earth as a human, who died on the cross after doing nothing wrong, but then rose again three days later to defeat any sin and pain and death that we might face so that we can be with him forever. All it takes for us to be with him is for us to say, yep, I'm a sinner. I made some mistakes and I need Jesus to forgive me. When we do, the Bible says he will. Then you don't have to worry about the last days at all. Wait. Are the last days something that we should be worried about? Why would we have to worry? Now you might be thinking to yourself, if the world is coming to an end, that means that it's gonna be bad and things are gonna go away and it's not gonna be good anymore. And to you, I would say, yes, you're right. Things won't be so great. Wait, I need my Bible back. Let's flip back to the book of Matthew once and let's talk about what Jesus says about the last days. Now, do you guys remember the story where Jesus and his disciples were walking near the temple and the disciples were like, wow, look at all those cool buildings. Aren't they awesome? Look how tall and strong they are. Look at all the pretty stones. Look at the decorations. Jesus, isn't this amazing? And Jesus was like, hey, you know, you see all this stuff? It's coming down someday. All of it is gonna get destroyed. It's true. Jesus' disciples were a little freaked out. They were like, uh, what's gonna happen? When is this gonna look like? What's going on? And so Jesus explains to them in Mark chapter 13 or Matthew chapter 24, he says, Jesus answered, keep watch and be careful that no one fools you. Many will come in my name. They will claim I'm the Messiah. They will fool many people. You will hear about war. Jesus says that you will hear people talking about wars and future wars. Don't be alarmed, these things must happen. Jesus says that nation will fight against nation and kingdom will fight against kingdom. People will go hungry and there will be earthquakes in many places. All over the world, bad things are gonna happen. People will capture people. They will hand them over to be treated badly and even killed. All nations will hate you because of me. Oh, that doesn't sound so great. Jesus goes on to explain that at the end of the world, things are gonna get rough. Firstly, it's gonna be a lot of fighting. <laughs> the Bible says that people are gonna go to war, that they're gonna fight each other, that nations are gonna fight other nations for not really good reasons. In fact, people that believe in Jesus are gonna be hunted down and captured and killed. 
The Bible says that this is going to happen all over the world. Jesus also says that people are going to go hungry and get sick. There won't be enough food and resources to take care of everybody. They're going to get lost in the wilderness. They're going to have to flee from their homes and live up in the mountains or in the wilds. That's how bad it's going to be. Jesus quotes a prophet that said, The sun will get dark and the moon won't shine. Stars will fall from the sky and heavenly bodies will be shaken. Dude, this does not sound good at all. We actually have a word to describe this. It's called tribulation. The tribulation is going to be a time where everyone in the world is going to have it really rough, especially the people who believe in Jesus. Many people are going to try and trick them into thinking that they're supposed to follow something else or somebody else instead. But Jesus says, don't do that. Keep watch for me. People are going to get really sick and they're going to start looking for ways to get better. And it's going to be in all the wrong ways. And Jesus says, don't do that. Keep watch for me. People are going to do terrible things to each other and the whole world is going to be a disaster. The tribulation is going to be tough. But Jesus says not to worry. Jesus says that things like this are going to happen all the time, but it's going to get the worst right before he comes back. But even still, he has saved us and his words are enough. Here's what he says. He says, what I'm about to tell you is true. People living now will certainly not pass away until these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Well, that's pretty encouraging, I suppose. When is this all going to happen? Jesus' disciples asked. And he said, nobody knows. Only the Father does. So keep watch. Pay attention to what's going on around you. But remember that I am enough. I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, times might get tough, but Jesus is enough. Times might get tough, but Jesus is enough. The tribulation is going to be a time where it's not great for anybody, especially people who love Jesus. But God promises to protect his people and come back for those who love him. No matter how sad or sick or upset that you get, you can trust that Jesus is enough. No matter how mad or angry or upset or fighty that everybody else around us gets, you can trust that Jesus is enough. You guys, when I think about the tribulation and what the Bible says about it and about how there's going to be conquer and conquest and death and plagues and famine, it doesn't make me feel the greatest, you know? But then I think about God's promise of heaven a perfect place where there will be no sickness, no pain, no harm. That sounds awesome. And the Bible does promise that's true. Let me show you. In the book of Revelation, one of Jesus' best friends is having a dream given to him by God in order to talk about what the end of the world is going to look like. He says that in heaven we'll get to stand in front of the throne of God. He says, so they are in front of the throne of God. They serve him day and night in his temple. The one who sits on the throne will be with them to keep them safe. Never again will they be hungry. Never again will they go thirsty. The sun will not beat down on them or harm them, and the heat of the desert will not harm them. The lamb who is at the center of the area around the throne will be their shepherd, and he will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Wow, so beautiful, so relaxing, so comforting and exciting. The Bible describes Jesus as our shepherd and our king. As gentle as a shepherd watching over a flock of sheep, Jesus watches over his people. And in heaven, there will be no more pain, no more sickness, no more sadness. Everybody will get to be with Jesus forever. Man, it does not matter how tough the times get. The tribulation might be a rough seven years, but you know what? Doesn't matter. God promises that heaven is for those that love him, that turn away from their sins and decide to follow him forever. So let's decide to do that today. Am I right? The Bible says that times will get tough, but Jesus is enough. Today, if you've never asked Jesus to forgive you of your sins, if you want to decide to follow Jesus so that you can be with him forever in heaven, we're going to do that together. Let's pray together and ask Jesus to forgive us from our sins and to help us remember that he will always be enough. Here we go. Dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner and I've made a lot of mistakes. 
And I know that the tribulation is gonna be awful, but you are enough. I pray that you forgive me of my sins, take away the bad things that I've done wrong, and help me to do what's right. Help me to love you and follow you for the rest of my life. Help me not to be afraid or worried of whatever comes next and to trust you no matter what. We love you so much, Jesus. And in Jesus' name, all God's kids said, amen. Amen. Thank you so, so very much for joining me for a lesson in Crossroads, kids. I know it was kind of a weird one today, but we're learning about what the Bible says is true. And the Bible says times will get tough, but Jesus is enough. I hope you have a fantastic day and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye, everybody.